What's up everybody? Welcome back to Fight Bible. Joe and Brad, former UFC fighter, here for another fighting demonstration video. Padman Brad is back on form, baby. From a, a competition Today we are going to be covering the second part of our lesson which we showed you last week, which is how to fight whilst backing up. So last week we showed you how to fight coming forward against an opponent that's backing up, and now we're going to show you how to fight whilst backing up. Technically, if you watch both videos, you could become a very all-round fighter. You could be an assassin. You could be you an absolute beast. If you watch Naruto, then you'd understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> you could be a shinobi. Yeah, you could even be Jonin level by the time you finish these videos. I have no idea. Right, okay, so the basic of this video is you have a guy who is coming forward at you. He might be coming forward with the switch stance style, which we showed you last week, which was I'm stepping, I'm moving, I'm dropping my shoulders, and I'm throwing, and I'm gaining that reach by swapping stance. We're gonna be doing the exact same thing off the back foot whilst retreating. You have some fighters who do this as part of their stance. It is their entire game plan. It's to catch people with counter punches. It's to allow someone to close the distance, hope to overextend the hand, and then come over the top and Ooh. bush. From a, a competition You've had this several times in some of your fights. I've been caught and I've caught people with it. Yeah. Well, the master of this, annoying as it is, Conor McGregor. If you look at the Jose Aldo fight, Aldo steps forward. Bop, bop. Conor relaxed and smiling. Oh, oh no! Now, the way Paul Daly taught me to do this, I was at a seminar a long time ago at Leicester Shoot Fighters with Nathan Leverton. Blah, blah, blah. Great coaches. If you're anywhere near Leicester Shoot Fighters, you must go there, all right? And this is a nice, easy stance. I sit back, I relax myself. Here's my strikes. Now, when someone closes Paul Daly down, he taught me to do this. Switch stance, put your head over your rear leg. So that puts your shoulder, knee, toe to the other side. Shoulder, knee, toe, the other side. And he switches and he stays loaded on this side. Now from here, he throws the hook. Now, to repeat this process, the guy continues coming forward. Switch, shoulder, knee, toe, hit and so on. So if I do this again, I do it a couple of times. Here, one, two, three. All right, that is one way of doing it. Now, the way I just showed you then, here, here. As you notice, I struck off the same hand I stepped on the leg to. The other way I got taught to do this, which is the opposite to last week, was as you come in, I switch with the same hand, same leg, here. So instead of this, I'm doing this. Now myself personally, I prefer doing like a combo or mixing them both up. So I prefer doing this. So I added an extra, uh, an extra punch in to fill in the gap. If I do this move, you see there's a slight gap. Watch, one, two, three, hit. If I do it this way, one, two, three, hit. I can break that up. Now, if I go solely the other way, here, watch this. One, two, three, four, five. You can change the punches up as you go. I see Mike can be throwing different punches to me because he's Neo to a grasshopper and he has to stand on two telephone books to give Gandalf head. Like, he's, he's quite sure, right? Me and him won't be throwing the same punches, right? I see Mike will probably be throwing big overhands here. Whereas nine times out of 10, I'm normally the taller guy. Someone, someone comes into me, I'll punch short, sharp, chopping shots. There's a difference between running away and defensively moving and attacking, right? I would say personally, this is, this is what I would call running away. It's not good in a fight, really, if, if, especially if you're in a ring or a cage. If you want to tactically retreat here, and you can use punches to hide your steps. A great coach called Steve Morris taught this, uh, taught this to me once, right? He goes, whenever you retreat, fill the gaps with punches, right? That might not mean anything to you at the moment, but watch this. If I retreat now, just like this, one, two, three, or if I retreat like this, one, two, three. Now, if I fill those gaps in between my steps with strikes, so if I do this as I step back first one, or if I retreat this way, here, the other one. What I've done is I've made it harder for my opponent to close me down because I'm throwing strikes back at him. And that is a very, very clever thing to do. And it's also very, very difficult. But once you've learned it, you will find it's not so hard. It just takes practice, time, and effort. When you're fighting a lot of white belts and when white belts spar, you will find this moment of stalemate. <laughs> Nobody has a fucking clue what they're doing. 
One will start to come forward, the other one will instinctively just go, go backwards because they don't want to get punched. But that just turns into a game of like tit for tat, run away, you run away, I'll run away, you run away. And it's just, there's no one actively striking on the defense, which is 50% of the fight, essentially, learning how to attack whilst defending. So as Brad comes forward, I'm gonna cover up. I'm gonna start running away. I'm gonna start just surfing for no reason. I've got no tactic here. I've got my hands up. I'm just long guarding. I'm just putting something in front of me and him. And if he hits me, I'm just gonna curl the fuck up and I'm gonna run. And he punched me again. <laughs> Don't miss. How the miss for you this good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the difference is that obviously I didn't throw anything back. What was the fucking point in me running away? As Brad comes forward again, it's like, okay, there's something I'm gonna come through. And I'm just, I backed up, I waited for the punch to overextend and I stepped wide, changed my angle, come over with an overhand. There's thousands of different ways in which we can do this. Obviously Brad's version of step, 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 great. Brad's version of punching whilst getting your body weight forward is even better. It means that you can fight in a straight line. As I come forward, throwing shit, now I have to guard up because my punches I've overextended because he's chasing me down. He's slowed his punch. He's dropped his weight and his foot is still there and he can come back forward as I come forward. Ah, that's one more thing as well. These two drills, they coincide. You can do these together. Watch this, I'm gonna get Joe the of here. Joe's gonna come towards me now. I'm gonna step back, one, two, crack. Now we retreat and I come back forward. So I managed to get him of not just going backwards and I've outstruck him, I then come forwards and outstruck him. I'll show you that again, watch this. Joe's gonna throw a jab cross jab, all right? I'm gonna retreat here, all right? Now I'm gonna come back forward now. One, two, three, and there we go. It's super simple as long as you understand your biomechanics, all right? When I retreat now, watch. Head goes over this leg, head goes over that leg. And you repeat this process. As I come forward, it's the other way around. The idea being, guys, if he's changing his stance and he's throwing that leg off, yeah. I go for my jab, his head's offline. I go for my straight, his head's offline. I literally, it makes him a lot harder to hit. And I might be so focused on hitting him, that I'm not throwing my head offline, which means that my head is stationary and he can yeah, then okay. capitalize on that. So it all comes into play. There are so many lessons to learn whilst not only going forward, whilst going backwards. Some of the best boxers and MMA fighters are the best because they counter, not just because they are offensive. Look at Roy Jones Jr. Floyd Mayweather is one of the best counter punches there is. So he literally spent his entire life guarded up, pop, little quick pop. shots coming out of nowhere. Or whilst, pop, yeah, pop. exactly, that's one of his favorites, yeah. Pop, pop, absolutely incredible. Yeah. Okay, so put into a sparring situation, we're in here. If you're this far away, Eh, it's not really engaging. That's not really the whole point of sparring. The whole point of sparring is to get hit and hit back. It's learning at the end of the day. You want to be in here, you want to be testing his head movement. And you also want to be receiving the head movement and learning how to, how to duck and how to weave. And if I come forward at Brad, he's going to come backwards. And if he comes forward, I'm going to look to change my stance and move and find an angle in which I can counter him. You're not just running away. It's not a game of chase. Tag. It's tag at the end of the day, yeah. You're not just... You, right, you come forward at me and I'm going to bitch out. <laughs> now we're knackered. <sighs> I'm going to come forward at Brad. That's... No one learns from that, let's put it that way. If you can't learn to fight whilst defending, you're not really fighting. It's literally 50% of the game. Guys, here we have it. I'm going to show you a little trick now. This is one of my favorite counters. Right, I'm going to have Joe come towards me now. He's going to come forward with his jab. Now what I'm going to do is with my rear hand, like you should always do, whenever someone throws a jab at your face, you tap down with the rear hand. All right, and this, it's not this jab again, Joan. No. We don't do that, right? We it's also, also not long either. We also don't do this. Good again. <laughs> don't do yeah, that. Yeah, that right? don't work. Mr. Wong, we don't do any of that shit. We also don't do this. No. That's also Mr. Wong. All right, but this is one we do do. All right, watch this. So I'm here, bang, there's my counter. That is a very, very common uh, boxing counter for jab. Jab again, boom. Now, what I like to do is I add a back step to this. If Joe's coming in strong with that jab, I add a back step. You want to see that again? Super slow motion here. So at the same time as he jabs, 
I pat down and I count it with my own jab. Now what I like to do is add a check hook off my rear hand, right? Right, so now if we do this. So slow. I might have eaten that first one. I might have blocked it because again, a good fighter, like you said, you're gonna be patting down that backhand jab. So you pat that one, I've got this one here on my long guard, but, but I don't have a guard here. I'm very much likely not gonna go from here to here. You know, like Floyd style, I'm not gonna go to Philly shell off of my own jab. Probably not gonna happen. I'm not gonna drop it down. If this is overextended and this is just caught a jab, my ear temple area, very, very open for those beautiful knuckles over the top. Right, one more time, super slow. Watch this. He steps in, same time I hit. The momentum comes forward. Oh. And that's also when you start finding yeah. more bombs in. Yeah. Overhand hooks, especially Correct. off the back step, are evil. Absolutely horrible. Because the weight transfer, whenever yeah. you transfer the weight, yeah. it's like a pulling motion and it pulls your arm. But you're also getting your head offline as well, which massively helps. It means that if I do come forward and I go throw this one, mm. And I'm stepping forward, yeah, I'm way offline, and you're not. So, brilliant. Remember that shoulder, knee, toe. Never forget It's that nice time. that you are fully loaded up. Like you said, you're here, oh. as you step, pop. You That's fully weighted to throw that whole body weight over. So it's, it's got some real power in it. And you're stepping backwards, whip. everything is, whip, whip, whip. it might feel like your weight's off center, but you're throwing it back that way so it never that's really the, leaves point. it it's never like a loses pull. Yeah, it never leaves your center of gravity no because you're adding you're adding inertia to get boom. you back in line um boom and that's yeah. how it works then Me very good too. very good yeah there's a so there you have no, it guys no dick grabbing involved in self-defense baby no making you pregnant so there, you, <laughs> so there you have it guys i hope you enjoyed it please like subscribe share all that bullshit but more importantly practice it Try oh it. are you going to quote ramsey think. dewey what, what did he say uh Get out there and train. We are the fight bible, so maybe we should. Uh, oh no! In all fairness, we should be, we should be flowing off Ramsey. Yeah. Get I out know. there and train in the way of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Do what time. Jesus would do. Do what Jesus would do, which is a crucifix. <laughs> Left, <laughs> over and right. No, yeah. Uh, go and practice it, guys. Mm -hmm. Please like, subscribe. Let us know what we want to teach you. Please. Ask us questions. We don't get. We don't care if you're dicks, Evo, because we'll just give you dickhead comments. You know what we're like. We've got. Yeah, to we're not Amazon customer, customer service. We're not. Yeah, we're not the. Write customer something service. stupid. You will get something back. We're not. We're not the Walmart customer survey. If you say UK. that we are uh, not very nice to other martial arts, or you guys have no no honor or any of that bollocks, swivel. I lost my honor after I lost my first fight after doing kung fu. Yeah, but that's you, why I lost my. That's why I lost my. You honor. watched the. Uh, I tried catching. What did you try? No, Ong Bak. You watched Ong Bak. We all tried to catch some fists. Yeah. <laughs> even, even though even though Ong Bak was actually Thai boxing. Yeah. But still, it doesn't matter. I lost my respect for that a long time ago. Absolutely. Right. right. So anyway, here we are, guys. Over and out. Brad, Joe, blah blah blah. Boom, son. See you later on. Mm. Done.